الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يدلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله وبعد ان الاستق الحديث كلام الله وخير الحدي حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار وكل ضلاله في النار وبعد ما with another jalsa مع المؤمنات sitting with the believing sisters or the believing women we start out today this evening remembering the words of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala وما كان للمؤمن وما كان للمؤمن ولا مؤمنة اذا قضى الله ورسوله امرا ان يكون له خيره من امره ومن يعص الله ورسوله فقد ضل ضلالا مبينا it is not for a believer man or woman when allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam have decreed a matter that they should have any option in their decision and whoever disobeys allah and his messenger he has indeed strayed in a plain error he has gone clearly astray وما كان لمؤمن ولا مؤمنة it is not for a believer man or woman إذا قال الله ورسوله أمرا when Allah and his messenger have decreed a matter أن يكون لهم خيرة الخيرة من أمره that they should have any choice any option in their decision when he asks Allah and his Messenger and whoever disobeys Allah and his Messenger فقد ضل ضلالا مبينا that person has indeed gone clearly astray when Allah Taala mentions in the book of Allah in his book an order or a decision on a matter and when the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentions in the sunnah an order or prohibition or decision on a matter the position of the believer is that he is he or she is without any choice مسلوب اختيار without any choice and the one who disobeys Allah and his messenger has certainly surely gone clearly astray Allah tabarak wa ta'ala says in the Quran meaning of the ayah and tell the believing women to lower their gaze from looking at forbidden things and protect their private parts from illegal sexual acts and so on and not to show off 
there are dormant except only that which is apparent, like palms of hands or one eye or both eyes for necessity to see the way, or in some scholars of viewpoint, the face, or out to dress like the veil or gloves or head cover or apron, and so on, and to draw their veils over their bodies, to draw their veils over their bodies, their faces and necks, and the chest area, and not to reveal their adornment except to their husbands, their fathers their husbands' fathers, their sons, their husbands' sons, their brothers' or their brothers' sons, or their sisters' sons, or their Muslim women, meaning their sisters in Islam, or their female slaves in their right hand possess, or old male servants who lack vigor, or small children who na have no sense of the shame of sex, and let them not stamp their feet so as to reveal what they hide of beauty. And all of you beg Allah to forgive you all, all believers, that you may be successful. And all of you beg Allah to forgive you all, O believers, that you may be successful. And Allah Taala stated, in Surah Al-Ahzab, O Prophet, tell your wives and your daughters and the women of the believers to draw their cloaks, their veils, all over their bodies, meaning to screen themselves completely, except, as some of the scholars understand, the eyes are one eye to see the weight. And except that some other scholars are the viewpoint, the face. That will be better that they should be known as free, respectable women so as not to be annoyed. And Allah is ever of forgiving, most merciful. Allah Ta'ala has legislated al-hijab for a great wisdom al-hijab for a great wisdom and when we think of al-hijab or covering we should think of it as a ta'a in obedience to Allah ta'ala we should think of covering we must think of covering as a means of getting close to Allah wa ta'ala, we must think of clothing, covering with clothing, covering totally for the Muslim woman as a way of achieving the paradise. And that Allah wa ta'ala did not legislate covering for the Muslim woman to place in hardship upon her, but to protect her and to show her respect and to show her the level for which Islam is concerned about her. Hijab has with it many issues. The issue of shyness or modesty. This is an essential characteristic not only of the Muslim woman but of the Muslim man. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that Iman, that al haya shyness is from Iman. That shyness is from Iman. When a person has taqwa when a person has Iman, the more that that Iman is there, the more that they are modest and shy. So it is essential characteristic of a Muslim. 
but it is more of a characteristic for a mu'mina, for a believing woman, that she be modest and chaste, that she has no desire, no intent to be seen or heard or looked at or in the presence of men who it is haram for her to talk to, look at, be in their presence. Outside of the husband and her sons or her brother or uncles mean that it is haram for her to marry the Muslim woman must be of the viewpoint must stick to the principle that she must stay away and out of the way and not mix with other than those men this is the issue behind hijab the issue behind hijab is as Allah ta'ala mentions in another surah that the women the meaning of verse should stay in their houses and not go out like they're going out or tabarruj going out dressed inaccurately wearing perfume or makeup or colors that attract that she should be in the house no doubt about it Islam has stated that the place of the woman is the house this is no doubt about this there should be no doubt about this matter and that Islam has legislated that when she wants to come out when she needs to come out when she has to come out when she wants for instance to come to the house of Allah which is her full right to do she comes out fully covered this is the wisdom behind it La tabarak wa ta'ala did not legislate in this book that the women cover and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi did not mention the sunnah of the women covering for the purpose of when she comes out to mix amongst the people and her, for her to be constantly constantly in the presence of men where they can see her and point to her and look at her and hear her voice and know her name and so on and so forth this is not the purpose of hijab the purpose of hijab is that when she must come out and she can only come out fulfilling the requirements of the dress and the requirements of chastity and modesty that have been legislated in the sharia which means she can't come out wearing perfume because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam described such a woman as a fornicator or adulteress wearing perfume that others can smell wearing perfume that the men when she passed by smell that perfume so she cannot come out with that on she can't come out putting aside the discussion as to whether the veil is wajib or not putting aside that discussion if she doesn't believe that it is wajib she should not have her face made up she should not have makeup and lipstick she should not be shaping her eyebrows or anything of this nature false eyelashes lipstick eye mascara 
She cannot wear this. It's haram for her to wear this outside of her house. Outside of her house. Hijab is for when it is a necessity for her to come out of her house that she comes out fully covered without wearing perfume, without any makeup, without walking in a way to attract men or stamping her feet to get their attention. All of these are, and many more are some of the reasons why the likes of our great scholar and our great sheikh Abdul Aziz bin Baz has stated in the fatwa that it's forbidden for women to wear high heels. Because high heels make it so a woman has to walk a certain way. And fatwa like this also indicate, or reasons like this also bring about fatwa, they indicate that it's forbidden for a woman to have a ring in her nose if her face is not covered. She cannot wear those things. And the Muslim woman should be concerned about the issue of hijab. Hijab must cease, should cease to be something that I put on my head, something that I place on my head, and must start to be a concept. Hijab must cease to be just a particular piece of clothing and must begin to be a way of life. Hishma, modesty, chastity, being bashful, being shy, being pure and clean, these are the characteristics of a believing woman. These are the characteristics of a believing woman. She doesn't want to talk to men. She doesn't want to talk or mix with men. She don't want she does she does not want to be in their presence. She understands that pleasing Allah Ta'ala is in staying far away from mixing in any shape, fashion or form with men. These are some issues or these are some of the matters that the Muslim system must be, must be concerned with. And if her husband doesn't order her to be modest, and if her husband doesn't order her to have chast chastity, and if her, her husband doesn't know the rules and regulations and extent of hijab, that's no excuse. Because she is a servant of Allah Taala, and it's upon her also to seek knowledge and learn what Allah Taala wants from her, and what He will accept and will not accept from her, and what is acceptable code of conduct and what is not. She simply cannot use the excuse that my husband lets me dress this way, or my husband lets me do this. That is no excuse in front of Allah. Tabaraka wa ta'ala For everyone will come to Allah Tabaraka ta'ala alone Naked Uncircumcised And barefooted And there will be no intercessor between that person and Allah So The successful The believing Man or woman Is in pleasing Allah Tabaraka ta'ala And the verse that we open up with Is the verse that is our principle in this issue that when Allah and His Messenger has decided on an issue, we have no choice. It is not for a believing man or believing woman when Allah and His Messenger has decided in the matter to have any choice in the affair, to have any choice in the matter. So the one who believes in the Book of Allah and believes in the Sunnah of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has no choice but to follow what has been laid down, the laws that have been sent down by Allah Taala, and spread and taught and implemented 
by the Prophet وسلم, and his companions. The question of whether the veil is obligatory or not obligatory. To me, this issue is not really of much importance. Especially if we make or we understand that the way that we understand the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the way of the companions is that the way we implement these rules and implement our deen is how they were doing it. We come to the hadith or the narration of Aisha radiyallahu anha <coughs> which is in Abu Dawood and it's authentic that they were on Hajj and as we know the woman on Hajj is not allowed to wear the niqab she said Aisha the mother of the believers radiyallahu anha said that at Hajj when we were at Hajj when the men would pass we would cover our faces and when they would pass by we would uncover our faces when the men would pass by we would cover our faces and once they had passed by we would uncover our faces for the believing woman it is a must that she understand her deen like this that this is Aisha radiallahu anha Umul Mu'mineen mother of the believers and this is her action and her viewpoint on this matter she should say my viewpoint is the viewpoint of my mother my way is the way of my mother my belief and practice of Islam is as the belief and practice of Islam of my mother's the wives of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam this is very 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 important hijab hishma now this is the issue outside the house that she want, she wears the hijab and she wears the Islamic dress which is a dress which is wide set which is wide which is opaque cannot be seen through which is loose which is not very uh, astonishing in its colors right she's not see through we cover that and it's not tight nor is it like the dress of the men nor is it like the dress of the women of the kuffar these are the basic issues covered from head to toe having upon her a jilba which is that wide set that very wide dress having uh, a khimar and a niqab all of, it to, of that which would cover all of those areas and like we said if one doesn't believe it's obligatory to cover then one can at least get from what Aisha radiallahu said that when you are in the presence of men it is more modesty and closer to Allah to ta'ala to cover the hands in the face to cover now there is also the issue of what the woman can wear inside her house and who can she let see certain things this is very important because the ayah that we read said and they except not showing any beauty except to their women their women here meaning believing women meaning that no Muslim woman should be uncovering her hair to let some Catholic woman do it because a Catholic woman should, might see, should not be seeing her hair this is two opinions on this tafsir when it says their women some scholars said their women means their species but the clear the tafsir that seems to have light upon it nur upon it is when it says their women that it means a specific 
group of women because it's said that the beauty should not be shown except to the husband the father the husband and to the on and on and then it says they're women so Sheikh Muhammad Nasruddin al-Albani hafizahullah and he's not the only there are many scholars before him they're women say means Muslim women meaning that if you're, you have non-Muslim relatives they can't see your hair uncovered they can't see you without your hijab you can't go to kafir women and kafir functions and let them see you without your hijab without libas al-shari the islamically legislated clothing or dress or coat of dress now the ayah says the zina their areas of adornment the scholar said means the areas of adornment where you will place beautification okay or your jewelry and things of this nature like the necklace for a neck um, where you put your bracelet and so on and so forth these are areas of adornment so the scholars state that this is what is allowed to be seen by other than the husband that is not allowed for the Muslim woman to walk around the house with shorts up to her knees and everyone seeing this just like it's not allowed for the man to walk around the house naked like some kuffar do they walk around and in their underwear and so on and so forth this is not becoming or behaving like a Muslim but for the women to show other than those places where the beautification is placed where they the an anklet the bracelet for the ankle the bracelet for uh, that goes on the arms you know they have bracelets that go all the way up to the arm or whatever and on the neck and the earrings on the ears and so on and so forth uh, these are the areas that can be seen by other than the husband what this means is that there's no way where a Muslim woman can go and be in front of a Muslim sister even and this sister can see her uh, the tightness of her clothing or can see her breast maybe through the uh, through the shirt or cause it's tight or it's fitting or it's showing uh, this area or see her legs much less her thigh or her knee and so on and so forth this is not allowed she can't be sitting like this saying this is my Muslim sister no this is only allowed to be seen by the husband and allowed to be seen by physicians or someone else in the case of emergency but to be lounging around in lingerie or in Daisy Dukes if the term is, is correct or hot pants as they used to call them in the 70s or halter tops this is not proper Muslim dress for a Muslim woman to dress this way in front of anybody on earth except her husband not even a father or mother is supposed to see this except for a Muslim husband so we must understand the difference between the concept of dress when you go outside the house and who you are allowed to be around and how you have to dress in that regard and what you're allowed to show only to your husband and what you're allowed to show to others Muslim sisters wearing tight clothing jogging outfits saying let's all exercise exercise is good it's not forbidden but that type of clothing which is tight and which shows and which uh, the shows other than the areas of the places of beautification cannot be worn this is a concept cannot be worn in front of other Muslim sisters it can be worn in front of the husband you want to work out in front of your husband you can do that but to do that in front of other Muslim sisters is uh, un not understanding the concept of hijab not understanding the concept of modesty not understanding hishma or chastity 
or bashfulness or shyness. So hijab is a whole way of life that when someone asks, calls their house and asks for some from your husband, leaving a message, you have to take down information. Hijab must be practiced. Hishma must be practiced. Modesty must be practiced. Don't have a long, detailed conversation as this is an old lost friend, even if he is an old lost friend. No, it is conversation which has no seductiveness in the voice. Which has no, uh, nothing which will give the ill hearts any reason to think that you're taking down anything other than information that he's given. And خَيْرُ قَلَّامَ قَلَّ وَدَلَّ The best statement is that which is short and to the point. Best speech is that which is short to the point. No, he's not here. No, I don't know any of that. Who's calling? Salam alaikum. That's the best. That is hijab. Having long conversations and going on in detail and talking Husband comes through the door, you're talking. What well, was that? Oh, brother such and such. Uh, just a moment. These type of issues show that we don't, those who fall into it, really have an understanding of the concept of hijab. The believing man and the believing woman all are ordered to lower their gaze. The believing man, the believing woman, all, both, are ordered to lower their gaze. There, and there's no exception to this rule. Why well, I've known this brother in Islam long. He was there when I took shahada. We took shahada around the same time and so on and so forth. So therefore, it's allowed for you to speak or mix or talk. No. Hijab. Hijab. So the concept of hijab must become like that, become a matter or issue of life can't have the old prehistoric Neanderthal viewpoint of hijab just being a scarf that you place on your hair and you can therefore wear whatever else you want after that. Oh, that's not hijab. That's not hijab. As a matter of fact, it's worse than that. It's disobedience to Allah Ta'ala and to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and it will bring a person the punishment of Allah Ta'ala if they do not repent. The clothing can't be tight. This is an issue for men all and women. But specifically women, the clothing can't be tight. And it should not be something that attracts attention. And we're not talking because you're living in a Kafir country and no one ever has ever really seen the jilbab or niqab that they look at you, that, that's normal. We're talking about in the sense that here you're wearing silver, a silver niqab, and a silver hijab, and a silver khimar rather, and a silver jilbab. This is the things that attract attention like this. Colors that attract attention should be avoided. Should be avoided. Doesn't mean that you have to walk around in black and black only even though that's the best color it seems most closest to what the companions the women of companions were wearing but other colors are of course permissible providing they're not those flashing astonishing colors that takes everyone's breath away and gets everybody looking in that direction this is not what hijab is for so if we understand this, if this issue is clear, that the woman's place is the home, however she may dislike that term, but if she's a believing woman, she won't dislike that term because she would realize that this is not a new path. This is not some new religion, but it's the deen sent down from the heavens and that women, generations and generations and generations of women have practiced their Islam in this manner. And there's so much activity to do in the house, so much teaching to do with children, and with arrangement of the bait and so on and so forth, 
that that is enough to keep a person busy. But that when she wants to go out and sit in circles of knowledge, or go to the masajid, or visit Muslim sisters, or so on and so forth, that when she must go out, this is where the hijab concept comes in. This is where the concept of being fully covered, fully covered. I must go out my house. I am not supposed to be seen by men that are not lawful to me, other than my husband and my father and brother and so on and so forth. Then I must fully cover. I must fully cover. And I must avoid them and stay away from them and don't mix with them. Even if they try to mix with me, I don't mix with them. But sometimes that's an excuse that, well, they're, they're trying to mix with me. I didn't approach the brother, brother approached me. I didn't say I stuck. That's not an excuse. The observance of hijab is a means of attaining paradise. An observance of hijab is a means, of course, first and foremost, of obtaining the pleasure of Allah. An observance of hijab was legislated by Allah wa ta'ala. Not by your husband, not by the imam of the community, not by Muslim brothers who sat in the back room and came up with this to bother or irritate or make my life more difficult. No, it was revealed. Allah Taala Himself spoke these words and wanted it in order that it be implemented. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam related it and the Sahabiyat the women, the companions, practice it to the utmost. And we are, are short, are falling short in many matters. And one of the matters we are falling short is, is teaching the proper concept of hijab. The proper concept of hijab. The proper understanding of hijab. The proper understanding of modesty. The proper understanding of chastity. The proper understanding of how you really be a total Muslim woman or believing woman. This has to start now for the young girls. Should have started yesterday for the young girls. They should be raised up on these issues of covering and of modesty and of chastity and of shyness and staying out of the way of males, young or old, staying out of their way and not mixing with them. Staying out of their way because Allah Taala forbid mixing. Staying out of their way because Allah Taala wants the woman to practice hijab. Staying out of their way because this is the path of paradise for the Muslim woman. These issues can be discussed in greater detail and adilla or evidences from Quran and Sunnah and from the way or history and life of the companions of the Prophet wasallam, their wives and the students of their wives and the students of their wives and history in general can show how this was implemented and understood. And we are not looking for a modern Islam, for a new Islam, from an Islam that allows us to do just, just about anything we want to do, and still we claim we're Muslim. No, that's not the Islam, that is not Islam that Allah Taala sent from the heavens. This Islam, on issues of principle, on issues that Allah Taala has revealed a clear text, and on issues in which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has revealed a clear text and issues of what the Muslims have been practicing since long time ago. It's the best way I can state it. Since the past, there is no compromise. There is no compromise. We are either going to be believers and practice what we're ordered to do or we're not. We're either going to be people that are trying to achieve the pleasure of Allah and His Jannah, or we're not. There's no in-between. And this is why we open with that verse. Because the believer's heart, deep down inside of the believer's 
the belief you have in his or her heart that what Allah legislates is best for me. What Allah legislates is best for me, whether I understand the wisdom behind it or not. And when I understand the wisdom behind it, فَهُوَ نُورٌ عَلَى النُّورٌ Then it's light upon light. Then it's light upon light. And when I don't understand it, my call and my motto is still سَمِعْنَا وَأَتَعْنَا We hear and we obey. سَمِعْنَا وَأَتَعْنَا We hear and we obey. So hijab and the issues of clothing and modesty and chastity and shyness and bashfulness is not something that is hard for the Muslim woman to do. It is not something hard. If one is sincere, one is sincere and, and one is sincerely trying to obtain the pleasure of Allah wa ta'ala. So going out the house for a need or for a benefit that is necessary, attending the masjid, going to see a female physician, going to take, uh, going shopping if your husband is not one who does that for you, or going with him if he and the, uh, if he is one who does that, going to the masjid, attaining circles of knowledge, visiting a Muslim sister or, who is sick or just a visitor, these are all right, these are okay. But when doing so, to be fully covered in the manner that has been legislated, not wearing anything tight, not wearing anything see-through, not wearing anything flashy, not wearing anything uh, that does not cover the Muslim sister from head to toe, from head to toe. The Kafir should not be able to look at the feet. Muslim men should not be able to look at the feet and show the form of the feet because there are ill hearts who have fetishes for feet. And Allah Taala knows what the creation with has within the sudur, in their chest. He knows what messes people up, what are their illnesses, and so on and so forth. So the woman has been ordered to cover all of that. And that when she speaks, she speaks in a clear manner which is not seductive so that she does not give those of who possess sick hearts any room or any opportunity and that she be fully respected. This is a, in a nutshell. I say a nutshell because there are several uh, books several, uh, lots of literature, I could say, that is written by the scholars on the issue of hijab. But keep in mind, the whole issue is removing it from being that a piece of cloth that you can take on and put on and take off to being a concept and a way of life. Hijab is a way of life. Hijab is a way of life. So this, must, this way or manner of the Muslim sister never changes. She doesn't wear niqab in the masjid. And then when she goes out in the public, there's no niqab. And hijab in front of Muslims. And then in front of kafir, all is shown. She's as if Allah Taala created her. With no clothing. No. This is not the case. If any hijab should be observed, if any niqab should be worn, if any hijab should be practiced, it should be practiced with the kuffar. They're the main ones we should, if the sister's going to cover her face, she should cover her face from. They're the main ones if she's going to turn to the side and look away from, she should turn aside and look away from. They're the main ones if she's going to get offended that she's approached, that she'd be offended that she's approached by them. Is we have to understand that our brothers, they should lower their gaze. And they must lower their gaze. But we should trust Muslims 
more than we trust the kuffar. This doesn't mean that she should uncover from the Muslim. But I was saying just if it was anyone that she should cover from, anyone that she should have the niqab on for, should be the kafir. The kafir. So hijab is a concept and a way of life. It is not a piece of material or cloth that it's placed. It's a behavior. It's a behavior. Even if a sister puts on the cat, has a bayon, a khimar, a jabab, so covered you can't see anything, full face veil. But she's in the crowd with there's five men around and she's the sixth person. And she's talking and giggling and laughing and jumping up and down or moving her hands or her eyes. She is not practicing hijab. So hijab is a, is a behavior. Is an, a, a behavior. Hijab is a behavior. And this behavior has to be there. This behavior is something that the Muslim woman, small or young or old or whatever, has to practice. And it has to become part and parcel, if you will, essential element of her character. And if this is not the case, then there's no benefit in covering your face while your behind is exposed. Wa sallallahu ala Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbi wa sallam.